Hello from Germany. My name is Florian Wolling. I'm research associate and PhD candidate of the ubiquitous computing lab at the University of Siegen. Today I'm presenting our paper, Pulsing, the heart rate variability as a unique fingerprint for the alignment of sensor data across multiple variable devices. The idea was born during my research visit in Finland at the Biomimetics and Intelligent Systems Group of the University of Oulu. Up to now, variables are typically worn in the wrist and thus have a limited location-specific perspective. A range of today's sensing tasks can however benefit from the use of multiple devices. Each of these devices thereby contributes insights into a local perspective, which cannot always be covered by a solitary device. Because most of the shelf variables do not support hardware synchronization, the independent devices show differences in their local clock and time. Consequently, the proper synchronization of the distributed devices is still one major challenge. Especially the sensor fusion and methods based on machine learning are suffering from a poor alignment of coincident events. The inaccuracies due to unmatched time inevitably result in a poor classification. There exist diverse techniques to obtain absolute global reference time. In typical variable scenarios, the accuracy of time obtained through GSM, GPS or similar is however an absolute overkill. The methods are of course highly accurate, but also tend to be too costly, complex and inefficient. Also, in most scenarios, the global time is simply not required. Relative time is perfectly sufficient as it enables the alignment of measurements, but the exact absolute time of events taking place is usually less important. In general, so-called online synchronization techniques are network-based and enable the clock adjustment in service. In doing so, the devices continuously exchange data packets to determine the differences of their local times. The most popular protocols are NTP and PTP, which are commonly used in the internet and local area networks. In favor of the varying comfort, the use of wireless communication is more common in variable systems. There exist several solutions for wireless sensor networks in general. However, those are not always perfectly suitable as the use of complex network protocols add a surplus of overhead to the already inefficient and energy-consuming radio transmission. Today's body area networks often utilize Bluetooth, which is optimized for low power applications. The achieved accuracies are very good, but usually not required for typical variable applications. In 2009, Banach et al. stated that for activity recognition, an accuracy better than 100 milliseconds is usually not required. That's why they proposed an offline synchronization method based on external incidents such as motion. The alignment of these sporadic but coincident events enables to match the time series offline, so after the individual recording. Over the years, the traditional synchronization gestures clapping, shaking and jumping established. Those suffer, however, from soft tissue deformation and delays due to motion sequences and inertia of the body parts. Based on this fundamental principle, several researchers proposed offline synchronization methods using various motion events observed by means of multiple different sensing modalities. Most recently, Ahmed et al. even proposed the use of calf events to match the measurements from devices equipped with either an accelerometer or a microphone. Without a cuff and at absolute rest, there are however no signals available that would enable the device's synchronization. So we asked ourselves, why not using the heartbeat of the human bearer as a common reference? The human heartbeat is a signal that is ubiquitous and by nature available throughout the entire body surface. It can be detected by means of different sensing modalities such as electrocardiography and photoplethysmography. The heartbeat is continuously detectable at a rate between 0.5 and 3 Hz, depending on the various physical activity and health condition. Moreover, even at rest, the heartbeat provides possible synchronization events at about 0.8 Hz. The heart rate is however pseudoperiodic and shows intrinsic variations. 
It is modulated by physiological processes, the respiration and also the autonomic nervous system. The superposition of these interfering signals results in a unique pulse pattern which we utilize in our method. Photoplatismography is a standard in today's variables as it is cheap and relatively easy to implement. PPG is an optical measurement principle that captures the blood volume flow in the skin and hence the pulse wave traveling through the blood vessels. Because the mechanical pulse wave is relatively slow, PPG suffers from strong location dependency and a varying pulse arrival time. In contrast, ECG has been present in clinical context for decades and is successively developing towards the use in variable devices at a single spot. The typical pointed peak of the ECG's well-known QRS complex can serve as a significant landmark that is quasi-simultaneously detectable throughout the entire body surface. Because PPG has a much slower, not negligible velocity, we decided to evaluate our approach on ECG signals first. As shown in this illustration, the trends of two synchronized ECG measurements are not identical. The direct application of a cross-correlation to match these time series would not only be resource inefficient, but also not very satisfying. A pre-processing stage to remove the baseline could, of course, help in this case. Depending on the actual measurement location, the pointed QRS complexes can, however, look very different and even show an inverted peak direction. The raw signals look quite different, but at any location, the detected heartbeats follow the same rhythm and form identical sequences of timestamps. Their distances are termed as interbeat intervals. Those serve as a standard feature in modern fitness trackers, which analyze the so-called heart rate variability. In a medical context, the enumerated interbeat intervals are often illustrated as a tachogram, which is, however, not very robust against interference in motion artifacts. In contrast, the interval function of the heart rate variability is a function of time and less or only locally affected. Furthermore, the interval function is even unique like a temporal fingerprint, which enables our approach to match the device's time series. So how can we match these heart rate variability fingerprints? The proposed pulsing processing pipeline is fairly simple. The heart rate variability interval functions are first derived from the previously identified for digital points the QRS complexes in case of ECG. The irregularly sampled sequences then have to be regularized, resampled at a lower rate of 25 Hz in our case. Next, a normalized cross-correlation is applied to match these interval functions. The position of maximum correlation then highlights the unique position of alignment. In this example, you can see a 60-second template from one device that is shifted along the reference from another one. The resulting correlation coefficient is shown on the right. In case of a match between the interval functions, the correlation coefficient is virtually 1. To evaluate the proposed method, we applied it to the dataset 716 of Howell and Poor from the University of Glasgow. The dataset contains two-minute ECG recordings from 25 subjects, recorded with two independent devices worn at the torso. The subjects performed five different tasks, of which the sitting subtask was chosen due to the availability of peak labels with a very high precision of one sample. Also, the absence of motion artifacts allowed to evaluate the general feasibility of our approach independent from specific situations and interference. The used dataset contains recordings that are pretended synchronous. There exists, however, no public dataset of two or more independent and at the same time hardware synchronized variable ECG devices. To nevertheless enable the valid evaluation of our alignment method, we developed a metric which follows the fundamental assumption that ECG signals are immediately and simultaneously detectable throughout the entire body surface. 
we introduced an error term that determines the minimum temporal distance between all proximate peaks. The overall mean and standard deviation serve as significant measures to independently identify the perfect matching position of the time series as ground truth. Any displacement of the time series results in an interference pattern that generates some error. In contrast, an ideal alignment results in a minimum error that tends towards zero. The assumption made is valid only for ECG-related measurements and the targeted accuracy in the order of a few milliseconds. Based on a minimum propagation velocity of 250 meters per second and a maximum distance of 1.5 meters between the measurement location and the heart, the worst case delay of 6 milliseconds would add to the determined accuracy. Corresponding to the previous example, this illustration shows the error generated through the interference pattern. In case of a match, the mean error as well as a standard deviation tend towards zero. We applied the Pearson product moment correlation, which is a normalized cross correlation. Instead of just a single template, we applied 101 windows of 60 seconds with an overlap of 1% and shifted them along the reference. Due to boundary effects of recordings with large displacement, the first or last few segments were rejected. For all subjects, we achieved very good alignment accuracies, without any outlier. The initial misalignment of the dataset's recordings was surprisingly high. The offsets range from 35 milliseconds in case of subject 5 to even 5 seconds in case of subject 19. While the initial interference error was quite high, with about 115 milliseconds, we finally achieved an overall alignment accuracy of about 3 milliseconds. Furthermore, along the determined offsets from the 101 cross-correlations, we are even able to monitor a small relative drift between the device's clocks. In this example, the relative drift is about one sample per 80 seconds and is also apparent as an increased standard deviation in the alignment error. We have presented PulseSync a novel method for the data-driven synchronization of sensor data across multiple variable devices. The method uses a heart rate variability interval function as a unique fingerprint to match the local time basis. We achieved an accuracy of about 3 milliseconds for ECG signals sampled at 250 Hz. The results are promising and unveiled even small drift across the device's clocks. In future research, we will evaluate the required window lengths for unique batching and the effect of motion artifacts on their accuracy and reliability. Furthermore, the normalized cross-correlation is not a very optimal method and we are already developing a more efficient algorithm to replace it. Please check out the project's GitHub repository. Thank you for your interest in this topic and I'm looking forward to answering your questions.